Oh yeah, very nice. Oh, stop the hate and buy an estate. Now imagine how amazing you will feel, but even more so your kids, that your dad has absolutely gapped some Fiesta ST in his family wagon. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I have an amazing car to show you. This is a 2015 F30 BMW 330D Touring. Um, I'm super excited about this car today because um, one, I've got a guilty pleasure for really fast diesels and two, um, it, it's a touring, an estate. Um, I really love estates, so let's not waste any more time and let's have a look around and show you what it's all about and we'll go for maybe just a quick drive and see what I think of it. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are of the BMW 330D Touring. I've only got this for a few hours, but my friend has kindly lent me this. Um, his name is Jay and I'll explain why he actually bought this car in particular um, and I'll link his socials and it'll become more apparent as to why he bought it. But let's have a look at the car and see what spec it is and see how it drives. So this is a 2015 model, so a pre-facelift and it's actually finished in this Glacier Silver. I'm not normally a huge fan of silver cars, but I have to say it actually really looks good with this F30 generation 3 series. And he's done some subtle modifications as well, um, which kind of complements the silver as well. So you got um, these black grills. Uh, I'm guessing they were originally chrome, but yeah, he's put some black ones on it. It looks really nice. Uh, LED uh, lights as well. Come around to the side. 19 inch wheels. What rubbers he got on there? Michelin's Pilot Sport 4S's. Very nice, good choice. And I believe it's got the M Sport Plus pack. I can't remember my packs very well. It's been a long time since I've done lots of stuff with BMWs because I'm now a Mercedes man, but I do love BMWs as well. On the side here, you have got these sweeping indicators because they're normally clear. This is quite darkened. Um, and if you actually want to know where you get those from, uh, you can get them on Amazon. I did a video of me installing it, but yeah, I did a terrible job of it, but I'll, I might link it in the video so you guys can see the process. Some of you guys may have spotted already it's sitting quite low and that is because it is on lowering springs, um, H&R lowering springs for that matter. I'm not too sure on what height they are so I can't tell you that unfortunately but that's why it's sitting at a pretty nice level and it looks fantastic. And with this not being an X-Drive format it means it does sit at a nice height. With the X-Drive models it does sit quite high and I'm not really a big fan of that so yes. This is a non X drive 330D touring. Come to the rear, and you've got this quite subtle but nice lip spoiler at the back. And then this is where it gets even better. Oh, I love the look of the estate and I love the look at the rear of these cars. Dual X exit exhaust, which is very nice. 330D badge there. And this is also his Instagram. Uh, so if you want to follow him, um, and there's a NIS Pro sticker there, which might hint why. He might have this car, but I'll tell you guys later. But this is where it gets really, really exciting for me because this is one of the best features on a car and I love it so much. It's this. Pull this here and the boots separate. You have a split tailgate. What a brilliant, brilliant feature. So you imagine you can't be bothered to open the boot because it's too heavy. You've got shopping, get in there and take it out. It is fantastic. It's the best, it's the best feature on a car, I think. And I love it very, very much. But you can also open it normally, and it is automated, and you can close it with that button there. And in here, I can't remember the exact number, I think it's either 485 or 495 litres of space. So more than enough space, and got this little load cover here, health pack, charging vault, uh, you've got underfloor storage in here. It's, just, it's a great, spacious, lovely place to be. Or, and you can fit many many things in there and I'm going to put that down so I can see later when I'm driving but yeah very spacious boot get a touring and there's your button to release it and put it down but overall it is a fantastic looking car really love the look of the BMW 3 series especially the touring um, I've definitely probably have mine in black sapphire I think that's the color I'd go for but even so with this glacier silver and the black accents here and there it does look very good indeed. But let's jump inside and have a look around and then go for a drive. Okay, let's have a look, quick look in the car. You see 
folding mirrors as well. Electric folding mirrors, very nice indeed. Let's get inside the car. M plaque there. You, it's a black Dakota leather seat, which you can find in the M140i also. And inside, it's business as usual, really, in a in this generation of BMW. Very ergonomically beautiful interior. If the center console facing towards the driver and angled this way it's very very good stuff this steering wheel probably one of my favorite steering wheels it's just a very elegant beautiful design and it, it's good and it's functional um you might be able to spot that he's got these um well they're not actually extenders they're actually genuine um paddles that he's put on himself giving you a more easier way of shifting up and down carbon fiber oh it's very nice very nice indeed in front of you it's very reminiscent to like a one series interior but it does feel a bit more spacious in here and this instrument cluster looks pretty similar but as you can see you got these two big dials but you got these two little separate dials i don't think in a one series no you don't you don't have these two separate dials the fuel and the temperature they're incorporated into there i guess um yeah and you got larger screen at the bottom as well which displays many things another thing i've noticed in the four series and three series interior which you get over a one series interior is this trim here that runs across the dash um and it's like colored sometimes it's blue i've seen them in red but this is obviously in black which probably is the best combination to go for with the silver trim and the silver exterior so yeah this also signifies you're not in a one series interior this is also a three series interior and it's more hugged down here more elegantly sculpted and you've got a glove box there with the key i guess you can lock it there um door bins are very generous indeed i'm pretty sure i can feel carpet in there so kind of lined so it doesn't rattle too much but yeah very generous door bins two cup holders um this piece here for your 12 volt socket got a silver trim here come up here you've got the bmw pro nav and over here you've got the harman kardon sound system so when i was talking about earlier the m sport plus pack i think with the blue brakes the pro nav and the harman kardon i think they're all intertwined into one package so i think that confirms this has the option ticked because i know you can get the small screen in a 330d as well one thing extra i might consider adding to the option list on this car would be a sunroof i'm not sure if they did a pan roof i think it was just a like a letterbox style sunroof but it would line up the interior just a little bit but overall very beautiful interior very nice place to be let's have a look at the practicality side of things because the reason you'd probably get an estate or a saloon is for the practicality side of things so let's come to the back not a very narrow opening it's quite generous to get inside but once i'm in here i've got oh i'm five feet and a half and i have got loads and loads of headroom um leg room i sit quite far back because um there's no reason for it it's, it's very childish but i sit quite far back because it's comfortable and my leg room is exceptional i've got loads and loads of leg room and loads of foot space look at my knee room it, it goes on forever over here you've got two additional speakers which signifies you've got harman kardon because i think normally it's just like a plastic cover down there but you've got two circular ones here um another cubby hole there which is okay size and you come over here you got even more speakers for your harman kardon which are on show but yeah overall the, the space inside of here is is so vast i kind of don't understand why you'd need a five series touring other than then probably maybe it's more comfortable anyway let's go for a drive okay guys you now join me in the bmw 330d and um well i've just been driving around for a little bit because i've had no experience in one so I want to get a bit of a feel for it before I relay my information to you to see, well, to tell you guys what it's like. And all I can say is, I, it's absolutely sublime. Um, it's it just does everything fantastically. Uh, so yeah, obviously it's not an M car. It's not my C63, for example. But everything I've experienced this car so far is 
better than I expected. It's so good. Um, so I'm just going to talk you what I'm feeling with my very short time of with this car. Um, and this is obviously being a saloon, but an estate, so it's not a, big, a massive car, but it's not, it's sizable. Um, and the way it drives is fantastic. It, it's, I mean, the steering, I'll, I'll get this out of the way. The steering is, is a bit numb, um, and I guess that's with just a lot of modern day cars and modern day BMWs, they're not as tactile or as, they don't feel as great as the old ones with this, this having electric steering, but other than that it still goes where you want it to it still feels great and it handles very well for this size of car the brakes um it's, it's got the m sport plus package so it does have i, I guess i guess upgraded brakes um and they do stop this car very well and then you've got the comfort side of things so this is on lowering springs so i'm not going to say it's like driving over an iron board because it isn't um, you do feel the bumps but it still feels compliant over this this relatively coarse road so yeah so far it handles well for a, a relatively big car um, and it drives well obviously I am sitting on these black Dakota leather seats which are also in the BMW 140i I did a review on a few weeks ago and yeah, well, they just are generally comfortable seats. They're not like super comfortable, but they are comfortable for all sorts of journeys and they do hold you in because they have got a decent amount of bolstering on the sides. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, um, the engine of this car, the 330D. So yeah, this has the N57 um, straight six turbocharged diesel unit. Um, it puts out about 256 brake horsepower and it puts out about 560 newton meters of torque. That is a lot of torque, and that is makes this car obscenely quick. Um, 0 to 60 is dealt with about 5.6 seconds, um, and it weighs around 1,600 kilos. So that's a lot of performance for something that weighs less than my C63. My C63 weighs 1,700 kilos, and the torque figure on that, bearing in mind my C63 is mapped is about 660 newton meters of torque, I think it is. Um, so yeah, this is 100 newton meters shy of what my C63 has. And this is just a economical family car. And obviously it's very practical as well. So it's just got mind boggling performance and it's just an ordinary diesel estate car. So yeah, when you put it in sport mode and come out of a corner, put your foot down, go out the results. Oh my god, that's so fast! I wasn't. Ex I haven't put my foot down properly yet, but that that is that is so fast. Like that is that is intoxicating. I know it's diesel power, but that is un unbelievably fast. And this isn't even mapped. It's a standard. And Jay's actually going to be uh, mapping this um, next week, so unfortunately, I'm not be able to see the results, but. With this being, well, what I've just experienced, that fast, standard, it, it kind of blows my mind to think what this car would be like with a stage one or stage two tune. And it's just, I can't put my head around it. Okay, let's extract the power again. Oh. <laughs> around the bend, put it in. Oh, it just goes on corner so well, and then you get the... Oh my God, that is blisteringly quick that is so that is so much power it's, i can't begin to imagine like how quick it would be of a map but that is unbelievably fast okay let's do a quick like 90 60 sprint there's no one around me so let's just see how fast it is Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get off the line swiftly. Um, there was a bit of slip, but you see the traction and thing going off. But even so, such mega performance. And this is just a, this is even its final form. We get a map on this and it'd be absolutely blisteringly quick. Oh, I, I love these very much, I have to admit. Jay, if you're watching this, hit me up one day with this car. I like it a lot. Now I mentioned earlier there was a re 
reason why Jay may have bought this car. I don't know if it's 100% true, but the reason he got the 330D variant was simply because it's got so much torque and he needs a lot of torque because basically he's got a Nissan Skyline R33 and he's got a tow bar and he wants to get a trailer and basically he wants to tow that car around to wherever it needs to be. And I could just imagine if it was a 320D Touring. I've, obviously it's got enough performance for everyday things, but if you need to start towing things and everything, I, don't, I think this would be the car for the job because it won't have to struggle because it's got so much power. Whereas you have a 320D on the other hand, the chances are you probably have kids, you might have lots of luggage in the back, um, and you might have a roof rack, you might have all sorts. And I can just imagine the 320D with all that extra weight is going to struggle and the fuel economy on that behalf will probably be worse than a 330D. So it kind of makes me feel like this is the car to buy with this exact engine. It's definitely the sweet spot. It's got loads and loads of power and it will do everything effortlessly, especially with this ZF8 speed gearbox. It definitely complements it to a T. Another thing which really seems to baffle my mind about this car is, obviously it's a three series touring, so it's quite a, a big vehicle, um, but it doesn't actually feel big to drive. Uh, it doesn't feel intimidating or large. It just feels sporty and it just feels great to drive. I don't, I don't really have, I don't, I don't really have much to fault about this car. It just feels great. I mean, it's turning in here. I feel absolutely fantastic. So let's talk about some boring stuff which you might be interested in. Uh, so running costs, I think you can expect around Rotex to be about 165 pounds, which is, I'd say, pretty decent. Uh, fuel economy, that is very exciting, especially for me. And the fuel economy in this car is absolutely exceptional. Let's have a look what his car's average in its lifetime. I'm not sure if it'll tell me. I don't think I can get a figure up for you. But I know these cars can easily achieve 45, 50 mixed mileage. I think this has got around a 57 litre fuel tank. And Jay said he averages around 600 miles a tank, which I'm sure is around 50 miles per gallon or something like that. But I know these cars can easily achieve well over 60 miles per gallon on a long run. So <laughs> you really are getting everything for this car, everything. So I can't imagine the running costs being too dissimilar to a 320D because I'm pretty sure when I have driven, when I had my 420D, which is near enough the same variant, it's, yeah, it, it averaged, in my, in my ownership, it averaged around 45 miles per gallon. So this car really is perfect. It's everything the car you could ever really ever need. Okay, let's pull out here, have a bit of a pull. Bloody hell, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, my phone went absolutely flying there. That, that kind of shows you the level of torque we have here. But it's not just the, the power of this car. Obviously, if it being a diesel, it's obviously it's not everyone's ideal soundtrack, but I don't think the three litre diesel sound that bad, the, especially the straight six ones you get in this N57 engine. I think it sounds all right. And it's actually more of a refined engine. It doesn't sound very loud. You do get the sort of the chug, 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 but it's not a, it's anywhere near as loud as a two litre four cylinder diesel you get in like a 320D. It's nowhere near as loud as one of those. So this, you just get a much smoother, more refined, and a much more savage experience with, the, with this 3 litre diesel engine. I just don't, and I know obviously money is a big factor in as to why you get a 320 over a 330, because obviously they do demand a premium, but if you can stretch to a 330, I would, wouldn't even hesitate, just do it. It's honestly above and beyond a million times better than the, the four cylinder. 2 litre diesel and engine you can get. And the economy figures, well, they're near enough to make no difference. And if you've, if you've got a sooner estate, the chances are you will have a lot of weight in the car. So it's kind of a no-brainer really because the car will have literally be doing everything effortlessly. And 
then you get to the exciting part. If you are a dad uh, and you're doing a school run with your kids and then some boy racer comes along in his uh, uh, Fiesta ST, for example, comes with a set of lights, he's probably gonna think, oh yeah, family wagon, I've got this. And then you put your foot down, you absolutely obliterate. Imagine how amazing you will feel, but even more so your kids, that your dad has absolutely gapped some Fiesta ST in his family wagon. That, that, that excites me, like, if that ever happens to me, that I, I'm so ready to have a dad wagon. This is, this is a, the best, perfect family car for me. And I know someone I work with who's got a, a Estor Blue 3W 330 Touring just like this, and he's got a baby, and he is, he's doing the right thing. He is the man. That is, this is the perfect car to get if you're a family man. So if you are a family person watching this video and you do need to buy a new car, please, for the love of God, do not buy a Nissan Qashqai or a Hyundai Tucson or Tucson or whatever you want to call it, or an Audi Q5. All those pointless mid-sized crossovers or mid mini SUVs, forget about it. You don't need anything like that. This is honestly all the car you ever need. It's so much more fun to drive, it looks so much better, it's practical, it's comfortable, visibility is absolutely fine, it's not intimidating to drive, and you get the most exceptional amount of um, performance as well. I'm telling you, any family member out there watching this right now, please do not buy anything SUV related. Stop the hate and buy an estate. That, that is literally all I'm gonna say. Like, this is every bit of car you'll ever need. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there before I get a bit angry, so um, sorry for my rant, but if you have enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and like, um, and yeah, just buy a, an estate. It doesn't even have to be a BMW estate, just buy an estate. They are above and beyond so much better than SUVs. Just buy one immediately. Um, but other than that, bye for now. I didn't think this would make it into the video, but I had to show you guys this. I really like those in front, Honda S2000s. It's a facelift as well, with it being an 06 and those big exhaust pipes. Oh yeah, very nice. Ooh.